This is Mavericks All Access with Omaha Athletics, hosted by Anna Bellinghausen. All right, guys, welcome into our last episode of Mavericks All Access. We've got the women's volleyball team up here, Coach Buttermore, Shayla McCormick, and then McKenna Roof. Thank you guys so much for joining me. Got a bit of Omaha volleyball fans in here, okay. <laughs> we got to talk about the biggest headline, of course. I don't know if anybody's seen it, but we had Volleyball Day in Nebraska. One of the biggest things that's happened in women's sports, setting world records. What was that like just to be a part of now that you've had time to actually soak it all in, Coach? It was amazing. Yeah, it was kind of chaotic and the wind's blowing and you're out there on a platform in front of 92,000 and uh, kind of had to set the scouting report down and just go out there and coach and it was a lot of fun. So I know I talked to you post game just about what it meant and being a little girl once and looking up to volleyball players and now you get to see it on a grand stage and be a part of that. How surreal was that moment? It was super surreal. I mean, growing up, I was always watching these big games on TV and going, and I looked up to those girls so much. And so now, like, being someone that these little girls are looking up to is super special. And McKenna, for you as well, and seeing just maybe at home and watching, rewatching what you see on Sports Center and whatnot, and seeing the O out there, how, how important was that to you and that exposure? Yeah, it was just crazy. Like, I never thought I would get to experience that, or like any of us. I mean, I cried when I found out. I cried the day before. I cried right after the game. It was like happy to <laughs> like to be a part of it. So it was just crazy overall. You're just a crier. Yeah. Is that what we're getting? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But nonetheless, a very emotional moment. Shayla, I also want to bring up for you. So your dad played at Nebraska. So you both have played at Memorial Stadium. Did you guys get to talk about that? Yeah, he thought it was super cool that I also got to play there. I think when he started having kids, he dreamt of one of my brothers, you know, playing football there, but he was super excited to have at least one of his kids get to go out there. Yeah, you probably would have never guessed that it would be his daughter to play at Memorial yeah. Stadium. I, don't, I mean, like, clap for that. Let's go. That was awesome. <laughs> Speaking to this season, very tough non-conference schedule. You guys have faced top opponents after top opponents. I mean, Nebraska being one of them, but also Texas A&M, K-State. How do you schedule those when you're thinking about how you want this team to build up to those conference games? There's a lot of factors that go into it. So part of it is we want to play a nationally competitive schedule. That's that's where we want to be. So those are the teams we got to play. And, uh, you know, those are the teams that will, I think, get our fan base excited. You know, it's a lot more fun uh, to come to watch Texas A&M. We've, uh, administration's done a great job of, of building the ticket base and we've seen that already and uh, we've seen some great numbers for this coming weekend so we're excited about that uh, and then some of it's just kind of perfect storm in some cases you know we were looking into going in more of a mid-major tournament on Saturday uh, this last weekend but then volleyball day which kind of back and when it first came up was more probably going to be a Tuesday so we had two days buffer and we could fly to Chicago and go to this this other tournament and so uh, we needed a bus trip with just one match once they moved volleyball day to Wednesday. So that's kind of an example of, of, of what those things were. So, uh, but we, you know, we felt like we've, we've had some winnable matches that we let let go. And part of it's we're kind of inexperienced in some spots. And we've been playing some different lineups, which will pay dividends down the road. But, um, but you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take all comers, obviously. So, Yeah, I've heard you talk about not really thinking about the name on the jersey of your opponent. McKenna, when you look at the schedule, when you get it and you see these big names, how do you kind of use your, your mindset and your mentality to erase that and just think about it as, a, as another opponent and you want to be at that national level? I get excited when we see the schedule. I'm like, those are good teams. We have a chance to beat them. Like, let's go get it. And Sheila, for you and getting that experience after one more year, how does that kind of change your mindset when you go in and say, okay, I have this experience against these top schools? Yeah, it definitely helps that we've already had been playing these tough teams during our preseason since I was a freshman. And so just knowing what it takes to beat these competitive teams is really helpful now. Yeah, and Coach, you talk about just the new faces on the team and trying to get that chemistry together. Olivia Curry said it, and I believe the media day, she said, double the players, double the talent, double the competition. And I loved how she put that because you have to also think about the competition within your own team 
how have you seen that go down throughout the off season and preseason? Uh, she really did a good job, didn't she? That was, that was great. great. Yeah. We didn't, even, we didn't even work on that. That was a gem. Um, it's, it's just more competitive. You know, we have, if someone's not getting it done, then, uh, we have someone that can uh, come and put some pressure on them or fulfill different roles or uh, maybe we can slide positions and things like that. So, uh, and, that, and that's the way it should be. Uh, and so it's been uh, fun to have that competition in practice. It does, you know, we got to beat each other up and practice a little bit to, to bond, to, have, to build the culture we need to go win championships. So uh, it does, you know, you know, it's not always happy in practice, but that's the way it should be. You know, we should be competing in the gym. So, uh, so it's been, you know, it's been a lot of fun. There have been some, some tense moments, but it's also been a lot of fun. From a player's perspective, how does that change practice? Obviously, your teammates at the end of the day, but you're still competing for spots, and you want everyone to get better? Yeah, I am the from the top. I love everybody on our team, and I wish we could all play all the time, but in reality, that's not how it's going to go. And so being able to push each other every day for that starting spot has really, it does bond us closer together in a way because you are working so hard towards this one goal. And yeah, it just, it's a lot of fun to see how competitive the gym is. I think adding that many players to a team, um, obviously it can be hard, but in the long run, like it's really great. Um, like, what was I going to say? <laughs> oh, so it was like a big change, especially like I felt because in like the spring, there was only myself and one other middle. So like we were like constantly in drills, things like that. And then like now I can like watch on the sideline and see like things that are going on there. And it's, you know, it's not always fun like being on the sideline and practice when you're not used to it, but it'll definitely like help in the long run. And also just like we've been working really hard to build our relationships off the court. Um, that way, no matter how you feel about someone on the court, if you're competing with them, you can leave practice and still like be great friends with them. So, yeah, nine newcomers on this team, coach. Have you implemented any team bonding in the off season? Anything that you guys did specifically? <laughs> for, yeah, for sure. Uh, a lot of things, you know, because it takes all 18. You know, we can't have, you know, there's no neutrals in a gym. So you're either positive or you're negative that day. And so, uh, you know, regardless of your role, you know, we need you to be engaged. And if you're not, it, it slows the gym down. So, uh, but we also want to have a great experience. We want to, we want to build those relationships. Recruits will come and they'll be like, wow, it seems like a family. And, you know, it takes work. And so, yeah, we do do a lot of team building. We do different, you know, we'll send them out around town and they in one-on-one, -on -one, we call it date night. So they they'll pull a restaurant out of a hat and they'll go uh, to that restaurant unless they complain a lot about it. Uh, but <laughs> um, and so we'll do just things like that and large group things and different small group things. Yeah. How have you seen the new faces and the veterans on the team just kind of mesh together? Shayla, starting with you. Um, it's cool to see all the different relationships that are forming. I mean, at first it's always kind of awkward because these strangers pretty much are coming in and you're expected to be best friends with them right away. That doesn't always happen, but the more you get to know them and bond with them, it really does just turn into one big family. I agree with that. Like a strong thing for us is we're really just a family. So we got nine new sisters and um, although like there is 18 of us, all of us are together. So yeah, I'm better way honestly to bond than adversity playing those tough teams early on in the season do you feel like you specifically set that up for things to happen in order for this team to be where you want them to become conference uh, well I know one of the benefits we get from playing tough teams is we learn a lot about ourselves and so I, I would say we are uh, weeks ahead of where we would be if we had played teams we could be 3-0 uh, in the last two weeks so uh, in terms of progress and what we've been doing in the gym and practice, I'm, I'm really happy with the progress we've made. Uh, and, uh, and that wouldn't happen if we, if we just, you know, it's harder to expose those falls. These are good teams. They're well coached. They're going to, even without a, a really detailed scout at this point in the year, they're going to pick on things that make teams uncomfortable. They're going to expose our weaknesses and, and we're going to get better. Coach, what's impressed you about the group of newcomers? Anyone standing out so far? Oh man, There's just, we got a lot of newcomers. Um, I think you know Amanda has done a nice job 
uh, you know, of, of being aggressive for a freshman. She goes in there and she, she takes big swings, uh, you know, and, and, you know, we still make mistakes, uh, but she goes in there and takes big swings. So she's done a nice job. I think Ivy's done a good job. You know, her first start was Memorial Stadium. So that's, I didn't really think about that until just <laughs> <laughs> actually. He's coach. Uh, but, um, but she did a, she did a good job. So, uh, she was ready for the moment. So, um, that's just two of, of several I could name, but, uh, you know, Emily, uh, is also one that's, you know, wasn't a decorated high school player, but, uh, you know, she's very physical. She affects, you know, these other, these other hitters at the net in, in ways, uh, that a lot of middle blockers can't. And so, you know, even, even though she gets lost sometimes, she still does some good things out there. Uh, Erica's done a nice job at Libero, uh, when she's been in there. So just a lot of, a lot of, a lot of good things. I'm sure I forgot somebody, but. First start at Memorial Stadium. Wow. I mean, props Stat to her. coaching. <laughs> no. Uh, but this also gives opportunity for the veterans on the team to become leaders and step into more leadership roles. How have you both seen yourself just grow in that aspect? Yeah, it's been different. I've not always been, you know, a huge leader on the team. I think I always looked up to the upperclassmen when I was younger. And so now when we're in the huddles, I get the stares where it's like, what do we do now? And so just trying to figure that out and just kind of help the younger ones with what to do in like stressful situations has been a cool experience. Yeah, I'll add that um, the seniors that graduated last year, they were very big like vocal leaders, um, demanding, things like that. And a lot of the upperclassmen now are more like laid back and chill. So it's definitely been an adjustment for us. We've worked on not trying to necessarily be like the vocal and outgoing leaders, but being the best leaders in what ways we need to be. Um, so like for me, I'm just trying to like be a role model, make sure everyone knows that I'm there for them. Um, and yeah, just things like that. Yeah, I mean, that's a really good point. There's been really a change of guard with leadership in this program. Coach, how have you seen that kind of been passed down and that foundation have already been laid? Yeah, so um, that's a complicated question. Um, how do I summarize it all? Um, I would say, you know, Kenna's done a nice job. Kenna has had to step into that in a large, in a large way this spring. Uh, we've asked her to get uncomfortable. Uh, we, you know, in our gym, we talk about getting uncomfortable. That's how we learn. So, uh, in terms of even celebrating more, that's not, that's not Kenna's jam, but you know, she'll, uh, you know, she's, she will bring energy and it fires the team up. So, uh, and so I've seen Kenna do that through the spring and then Shayla's done a great job this preseason into the start of the season of really being a, a vocal leader in practice, which wasn't something, uh, you know, going back to the freshman year, you wouldn't have thought that that was even a, a possible route she could take. And now uh, she's up here. Yeah, now she's up here. <laughs> um, but, uh, she's doing a good job, uh, you know, being direct, uh, keeping everybody organized. So, uh, it's been really good, to, really fun to see. Yeah, this team comes in third in that preseason poll, of course, last season, getting the runner up in the postseason tournament. Do you guys hold that as motivation for the season and knowing that you were so close? I think it's just a summit league bylaw. By by we have to be third. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's fine. Do, are you motivated? I don't, I'm interested to hear this. I don't, we didn't talk about it. Um, yeah, in some ways I'm motivated by it because it's like, oh, I want to be number one. That would be awesome. But it takes a lot of work to get to that number one spot and so just not once again what coach is always saying about not looking at the name on the jersey it just is important to know that there are teams at the bottom that could be really good and then top teams could you know fall a few games and so just not really focusing on your rankings but just working hard every day in the gym to get better yeah um, I'm motivated by how good I know we are and what I know we can do um, in the nicest way. I don't really care what they have to say about the rankings. I say it just, it matters what happens on the court. So we just got to prove ourselves. You have to love that, hearing that from your players. That's great. We actually don't, we, we, this is the most we've talked about it. <laughs> so I, for, I forgot for a while they were coming out and then they came out yep. like four weeks after everybody else. But yeah. Um, but yeah, that's cool. Yeah, and then thinking back to last year and the success that this team had, what do you want to draw off that and bring into the season as momentum? Or is it, hey, clean slate, we don't even think about what happened last year? Ooh, another tough question. You guys want to take that one? 
Uh, were you asking me or them? Coach, I want okay. you to answer now that you said it was a tough question. Uh, yeah, I, you know, those things carry over a little bit. Uh, and then in good ways too, right? You know, we're, we're used to being in a, a certain spot in the conference standings. Uh, but, you know, we, we obviously have lost the last three finals matches. So, um, and we, we had opportunities. We've, we've won big matches uh, last year. A couple of key moments, and it's two points here and there. Uh, we didn't quite have it. You know, it wasn't, uh, you know, always necessarily a whole match of play. It was, it was a couple of key moments. So uh, we just need to get over that little hump this year. And who knows what it'll look like this year. It's going to have, you know, which team, which player is is, is, is hot at that point in the season. So, um, you know, I think, uh, you know, the perspective Ken and Shayla have had, you know, demonstrated right now is what's going to get us to that moment and we'll deal with that when we get there absolutely i want to go into your personal journeys as well so kenny you're from millard north and also we got a scut grad so a lot of scut people in the house here watch out uh i want to hear about both those programs and just the state of high school sports in nebraska and the level of volleyball in the state is outstanding as coach you know you're recruiting all the time when you think back to those experiences what stands out and being able to play for Omaha now being from here? I love my time in high school. Um, I think my team, we had a lot of like stacked players. Um, so that was good just to have that experience because obviously now we do as well. So I've like experienced that before, um, competitive practices, things like that. Um, I think high school volleyball in Nebraska is awesome. Um, I feel like the competition here is just better than other places and yeah I'm really grateful for my experiences. Yeah I loved high school volleyball I mean going to get our coach would always like it was expected of us to win and so then when we didn't it was like a slap in the face kind of but you just have to move past those moments and it has really helped me coming here and just I expect everybody to do their jobs and to win these games and so then if we don't then it's kind of a learning opportunity for us just to move past that moment and yeah I love volleyball in Nebraska high school volleyball state volleyball week is the best week of the year and I loved it well I know what you love it because you went to Scott and I yeah the four titles I'm sure mm -hmm. so you had two yeah. Taylor you had four so you got six state titles right here Coach, recruiting in state, how big is that for you? It's huge. We love it. Um, I love going. Uh, I'd much prefer to go to a high school volleyball match than a club volleyball tournament. I just think the environment in our state is, is so exciting, uh, and the club tournaments are always kind of the same. So uh, I just love, uh, you know, I don't get out to as, mon as many of them as I used to, but, um, you know, it's high-level volleyball. Uh, the students are into it. The fans are into it. Obviously, the players and coaches are into it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be high-level volleyball. So, um, and so to me, you know, the high school games are a lot of fun. Yeah, I want to give a shout out to a statistic that came out today. So, Omaha is one of the top 30 teams in home attendance across the country. That's awesome. I know the crowd can like truly make a difference in a volleyball game and you have to know as a volleyball fan, you know, when to cheer, when to not. How much does that affect you guys beyond uh, playing in front of 92,000 people? We'll just scratch that one out. <laughs> Honestly, I don't hear much from the fans. Like I'm kind of focused on the court, um, but I think Baxter is such a huge place. Like our fans really show up, but sometimes you can't tell because it's so big in there. So I think hearing that statistic today, I was like, it was just really like I was glad to hear that because sometimes it doesn't necessarily show because Baxter is so big mm -hmm. but we really do have the best fans so yeah they're the best I might like, kind of block everybody out during games so sometimes I can't hear it but last week when we played Texas A&M I could really hear the fans get excited especially if we like would win a challenge and everybody would cheer that's when I could really feel the energy I totally believe what you're saying because Shayla asked you after the Volleyball Day in Nebraska game and you're like, oh, it wasn't as like loud as I thought it was going to be. Yeah, no. What are you saying? What do you mean? It was, I, I can even hear afterwards. So that's really impressive for both of you. It's a big stadium. You can't really hear. <laughs> Coach, for you, what does that community support mean? Oh, it's great. You know, uh, Mike West and his team have done a great job of, of getting out and getting us out and, you know, building those relationships and being seen in the community. 
And, you know, we've seen it, you know, in attendance, you know, so far this year, you know, I thought, I thought the environment versus a and was in particular was electric, uh, especially because, you know, we, we really had a chance to, to at least extend that match to five, if not win it. So uh, we had a lot of students show up for that game. What? I keep bringing it up. <laughs> we had a lot of students for that game. Uh, and I, you know, it was, it was next level. So excited to see, you know, we, we got more to do and we'll keep growing. Yep, plenty more games to come. Guys, let's get to the fun questions to round off the show. So if you heard the women's soccer ones, they were, they were quite fun. Tim's over there, like, still shaking in his boots. Uh, got it. But Good. Coach Buttermore, we have some for you as well, so don't Great. worry. Um, but we'll start with the players here. So similar ones uh, to the women's soccer. We'll start with the first one, though. Who in the locker room would take the longest to get ready? See, I think Kaylee takes a while before games because if you've seen her hair, she has a lot of hair, beautiful hair. I think that alone takes up most of her routine. Yeah, it literally takes her like 20 minutes just through her hair. And I, before the games too? Yeah. Yes. Oh, wow. She's in the bathroom for so long. They're like, what are you doing in there? And when she's running late to practice, you're like, oh, she's just doing her hair. <laughs> she never been late to practice. <laughs> good. She, not, good time management then. It's not really a thing. Uh, who on the team would be able to go on American Idol and perform well? Who would you pick? So we actually just had karaoke night. I can't say that any of us are amazing singers, but I would say that Briley is the best performer. She just really gets the crowd engaged. Yeah. That's all that really matters at the end of the day. She's team. Okay. Who's the biggest bookworm on the team who's always studying, who's always reading on the bus, not on their phone? Not us. But yeah, not <laughs> us. Please, uh, probably Brindley. Yeah, I'd say Brindley or Rachel or the twins on our team they're freshmen oh, yeah. they are always doing homework so it's the freshman thing yeah. yeah all right this one's really gonna call someone out who is the messiest locker rachel fairbanks oh <laughs> he made it. i think you're on scene what's so messy about it what's in there i, I don't know I just the clothes it. everywhere no organization but it's okay it's in no. our space. It's all the mess. Briley is the man he is for sure. But then I got called out a lot too when we did that <laughs> shit. It's just a lot of clothes. It's not like messy. Yeah. That's fair. All right. Who on the team is the best chef and who is the worst? Do I have any input? Okay. Briley is the worst for sure. She once asked me how to make minute rice. She thought she needed like a strainer and stuff. I'm like, no. Uh, and then the best. Do you kick, cook a lot? Yeah, yeah. I feel like yeah, I'm pretty good. Yeah, give some props. Yeah. yeah, we'll go Shayla for that one. Yeah. All right. Who's the know. biggest jokester on the team? Briley has a lot of jokes, but a lot of the time there are Shayla's jokes that Shayla doesn't say loud enough, so Briley repeats them louder and gets all the credit. <laughs> Every time. This is it most times. That's a true friend right there. Just really standing up from Bela. Um, all right, last one. We asked we're in soccer this. Who on the team has the highest screen time? But you can also say if it's Coach Buttermore. Because I'd be very curious. No, I don't think it's him. No. Nope. Um once again, Briley is just an iPad kid. <laughs> <laughs> She's we should have brought Briley. Yeah, we should have brought Briley. Wow. Can you tell that her and Briley are roommates? Yeah. Oh, she's this roommates. Are, this is why. This so. is why. Okay. All right, coach, it's your turn now. One player has to pick out a tattoo for you. Who would you trust? Who would you not trust? Ooh. I think I'd go Kenna. To pick it out? Yeah. She okay. wouldn't do anything too mean to me. Okay. Who, who would you never let? Is it going to be Briley? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Nah, that's how, how, who would it, mm. who should I not let get the tattoo? I might go Briley. Uh, <laughs> She's just I, I could see Rachel getting on Ray and like doing something weird. Uh, <laughs> no, you don't think so? Morgan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't think I trust Morgan. Okay. Yeah. Who on the team would you let babysit your kids? Who would you not? <laughs> this is this. We got 18 names to go through here. <laughs> There's no red flags immediately, so maybe we'd have a little application and then go through that. But who would I not let? Shayla. 
<laughs> wow. That's a joke. That's a joke. That's a joke. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, there's no... Briley, because she's always on her iPad. We know we'll do the screen time. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's fair. All right, last one. Who would you let and not let on the aux cord for road trip? You've got the best and worst music. Ooh, Sheila has the worst music. Um, no. Best music... Uh, I don't listen to the music we listen to. I just tune it out, so I'm not really sure who picks what. I tune it out. Uh, I'm going to go... Who could have the aux cord? Who would I trust? This is this is an important question. I'm really putting a lot of careful. effort in it. Yeah. Uh, Brinley, I think I trust Brinley with the aux cord. Brinley's got Wait. she's got a, a wide variety of things she listens to, so we're gonna hit a winner in there somewhere for All everybody. Right. Well, hopefully they listen to this so they can hear these shout outs in between. We'll have to send it over to yeah. them. Yeah. So either be like in the doghouse during practice or or the love ya. Yes, I'm sure I'll hear about it. <laughs> or well, guys, rounding off the show, we did this with women's soccer. Most thing you're excited about? What do you, what do you, what are you looking forward to most of the season? We already had volleyball day in Nebraska. I got conference play coming up shortly. What are you looking forward to? Yeah, I'm just excited to start conference play. I think the difficult preseason games that we're playing are really preparing us for those conference games. I'm just excited to get out there. I'm excited for the chance to um, compete for another tournament championship and hopefully win one. And I'm also excited for the Creighton game this Friday. Yeah, go for you. I'm ready for this weekend. Yeah, we had a big weekend at Baxter. Three great teams. And uh, it should be a lot of great volleyball. So excited to practice tomorrow and then the next three days after that. Well, guys, thanks so much. Make sure you come out to the Baxter Arena and support these awesome teams. And also get out to Coniglia, support men's and women's soccer. Thank you all so much for coming out to Mavericks All Access.